The electroscope is a device that was used by early scientists to detect the presence of the magnitude of electric charge on a body. Back then it was the first electrical measuring instrument. In this tutorial we shall talk about the parts that make up the gold leaf electroscope and how it is charged both positively and negatively by induction. This is Kisembo Academy. Thanks for tuning in. As you can see in this diagram we are having the electroscope or it is sometimes referred to as the gold leaf electroscope. It has got a brass cup. This brass cup is connected to a brass rod which is connected to a brass plate and this brass plate has got the gold leaf. This leaf keeps flapping, it keeps diverting. It keeps diverging upwards or converging towards the brass plate downwards depending on what charge is imposed on top. This gold leaf also, or electroscope also has got an insulator and um, we have a glass window there and all this is within a metallic case. So now what exactly is the use of this? This device called the electroscope can be used to detect the presence of charge the nature of the charge, the magnitude of the charge, and the insulating property of any substance. We'll be looking at those later, but from our right up here, the device is used to detect the presence of charge, the nature of charge, the magnitude of the charge, and the insulating properties of a substance. A gold leaf electroscope or an electroscope for that matter can be charged in two ways. You can either charge it by contact or charge it by induction. In charging by contact, we simply place an electrophorus or any other charged body onto the cup of a gold leaf electroscope. Now, talking of an electrophorus, we did so in our previous videos. An electrophorus is simply a metallic disc that is mounted onto an insulating handle. So when we get this electrophorus and it is charged, when we put it on top of the cup of a gold leaf, the charge that is on that charged body simply tra is automatically transferred onto the electroscope and that is how we charge by contact. So we will also explain how we charge a gold leaf by induction. We look at charging by induction negatively. How do we charge an electroscope negatively? If we want to charge an electroscope so that it attains a negative charge it means that we are going to attain, we are going to first use introduce a body that is positively charged. We bring a positively charged body close to the cup of a gold leaf electroscope. This is the cup of a gold leaf electroscope. This is the brass rod, the brass plate, and the gold leaf. When we bring this positive charge, it means that it's going to attract the negative charges that are resident within this apparatus. So the neg negative charges will be attracted towards point A, and when the negative charges flow towards point A, it means that down here and around there, an excess of positive charges will be left. So it means that these areas will have an excess of positive charges as the negative charges are moving towards point A. Remember, as far as electrostatics is concerned, it is only the negative charges that move. Positive charges don't move. So this is our first step. We bring this positively charged body near the cup and this is what happens. So when that happens, in the second case, we earth, while this body is still in position, we earth the cup of the gold leaf electroscope. So when we earth this cup, the electrons from the earth are going to flow. Remember, it's only electrons that flow, though the negative charges, not the positive ones. So the electrons will flow onto the cup. When they do flow, it means that we are going to have an excess of negative charges here. When these electrons flow in, into this cup, they are going to go ahead and neutralize the positive charges that are already here. So when these positive charges are neutralized, it means that the gold leaf electroscope here is going to collapse. When it collapses, we remove this and the other thing at once. And when we do so, it means that now there is going to be a net negative charge in the gold leaf and so this will cause this leaf to diverge once more. And that is how we charge a gold leaf electroscope negatively by induction. 
So how do we do it positively? In charging a gold leaf electroscope positively by induction, we are going to do more or less the same thing. We are going to introduce a negatively charged body and we are going to bring it close to the cup of the gold leaf electroscope. When we bring it close, this negative, because this is negatively charged, it is going to repel the electrons or it's going to repel the negative charges here. So you're going to find that there is going to be a predominant positive charges at A, more positive charges at A, and the negative charges that will have been here will have been repelled to point B and towards the leaf. And so just like we did before, we are going to earth this cup while this body is still in position. So while the negative charge is still in position, we are going to earth this cup, and when this earth is, with this cup is earthed, electrons are going to flow from the cup to the, to the ground. So when the electrons go to the ground, it means that we are going to have less electrons here and more positive in this setup. And so after doing that for some time, when you remove this and that at once, you're going to have this predominantly having positive charges and so this leaf will diverge. So that is how we charge a gold leaf electroscope positively by induction. So in summary, there are two ways an electroscope can be charged. It can either be charged by contact or by induction. In charging by contact, we do so by placing a charged body like a metal disc of an electrophorus on top of a cup of a gold leaf electroscope. This transfers the charge onto the metal disc onto the electroscope. In charging by induction, the procedures are more so similar onto how we charged a conductor by induction as illustrated in the previous tutorials. The diagrams we have just explored show the process of charging the electroscope by induction. In our next tutorial, we shall look at how to use an electroscope to detect the presence of charge. Please don't forget to comment below or to hit that like button. Someone out there may like to watch this tutorial. Don't forget to share. Otherwise, for more videos, simply subscribe to this channel. For Kisembo Academy, this is Arnold Ranga Kurami.